Hello and welcome to the next part of my Olympic class build and paint for Dystopian Wars. In this one we're going to be tackling the final ship of the Three Sisters. This is going to be Britannic and you've seen her in part one where we did the build and we talked about the things that we changed on the model uh, to make her stand out between the other two because she was the last sister built which had most of the modifications that were learned historically from Titanic and early uh, Olympic as well. So Britannic really was the all sing and all dancing version of the three sisters and because she went on as a hospital ship in the first world war we're going to be painting our britannic as a hospital ship and uh, in the priming you'll have seen we uh, primed with our white and that's because well she's a white ship so we're going to be doing that uh, doing all our markings up as a hospital ship and uh, doing a bit of weathering like we did with Olympic as well just to bring that all out a little bit because she did have a bit of an extensive service as a hospital ship. So there's not really much else to say because we've basically covered everything else. So we're going to get on with it and see what Britannic looks like. <laughs> So before I continue on into some of the other details on the model, I wanted to stop here and talk about the colour differences between the other two ships. So all I've done so far is, as you've seen, do the white, which is just the white spray with the uh, speed paint over it, and then the decking, which is a nice uh, beige brown, a Vallejo beige brown, with a Army Painter soft tone wash over the top of that. What makes Britannic different and I know the other two ships look different as well, but what makes Britannic very much more stand out is that she is an overt ship, whereas Olympic is meant to be covert with all her dazzle camouflage. Titanic is meant to look impressive with her muted but um, majestic sort of colouring. Britannic is meant to be, I am here, I am a hospital ship, I need to stand out. So with that, her hull is majority white. We then have a yellow which we're going to use here. The yellow is going to be for her funnels. They're going to be an entire yellow funnel. Her cranes, these new lifeboat cranes, are going to be uh, a, a brown, so I'm going with a field drab for that because they, they just they were a little different. I then have to look at the green stripe. There's going to be a green stripe that goes the full length of the ship and what I'm going to do for that is a Vallejo flat green because the colour that I've used previously for the uh, green lighting, uh, the navigation lights on the other two ships, which is Vallejo light green, is going to be what is going to be used for green lighting that will be along these little details on the side. So I'll point that out with a smaller with a thing. So in these little recesses here, we're going to do those as the green lights that were on board Britannic that shone down and shone out uh, from the decking. Uh, we're then going to have to get some nice red and do a red cross. Probably going to use this vertical spar and these horizontal pieces as my guide for those red crosses. So there'll be one here. Then, because we don't really have room anywhere else, because she should have three per side, so there should be one roughly back here, then here, and then probably up here. We don't have the room for that on this model, so we're going to do one big one here. We're then going to do a red cross here on the bow, where the deck gun should be, uh, which is on Olympic and not on Titanic. But then also back here, I was either thinking of doing a red cross back here, or what I might actually probably do is turn this into a, a helipad, which we have discussed during the build. So we're going to do that in a sort of a dark grey, and then um, probably white or yellow markings with an H across the back there, and yellow marking around the edge of that piece as well. So potentially one big red cross on the side with the green lighting should look quite interesting. I think as I progress along I'm going to 
maybe reassess that as I add more colors and maybe see if there's a way I can balance that out by getting another cross. Maybe here, I'm not sure. Um, maybe a smaller one up on the bow, somewhere like that, or maybe somewhere like here, maybe. There's a lot of maybes here because we're trying to make something that was historically accurate apply to a non-historical miniature that just sort of vaguely looks like uh, that kind of ship. So here are the four colors we're going to be using from now. After each of these colors, there will be a cleanup step, which I've shown previously after the decking got washed, which is our matte white. We're going to be using that. And uh, once we have like the yellow on the funnels and stuff like that, we're going to be giving it a soft tone wash as well. So we're going to be keeping it constrained as much as possible to the necessary colors for the model and then a little bit of shading and then we can start working on weathering and stuff like that. So I just wanted to stop, talk about what the, the idea was and the, the direction I want to go in. And yeah, we'll continue on and see how we end up. So with the Britannic almost finished, it's now time to do a little bit of weathering. We have all our main colors down, everything we want, including a little bit of dark tone wash up along the top of the funnels. That gives it just a little bit more depth and a bit more interest. So what we're gonna move on to now is some weathering. And for this, we're gonna be using some soft tone wash. And this is just to add a little bit of uh, rust and grime streaking because this ship shouldn't be clean. It, uh, probably wouldn't have stayed clean very long, especially white at sea doesn't stay clean. So what we're doing is taking a bit of soft tone and we're gonna work it into any panel lines that we come across, like that, just to darken those. What we're also gonna do is pick areas down here and just draw little lines like that through there. That way we're just building up a little bit of streaking. Now this is a fairly long process but it is going to give us a good finish. And it works well on the Olympic when we did that, but because this is a brighter ship, it's going to be a bit more obvious, a bit more apparent what's going on. On these areas here, which are technically cut throughs into the decking or onto the decking to allow ropes and stuff to go through, we want to try and focus them on the bottom part of that. And then we can add a little bit of grime coming down from those as well. So along the bottom just to stain it, and this one will do two. So that sort of thing, that's what we're aiming for. So we'll get on with this, do it across the whole ship, and that should be our Britannic finished. We'll obviously give it a little bit of a matte varnish just to protect it, but other than that, the ship will be done.
So here we are at Journey's End, home port, all finished. All three sister ships are now done. And um, this was cool. I really enjoyed this. The, the models, from, from the quality of the model kit right up to the finish of the paint jobs, each ship has felt wonderful to paint. Um, it's been a lot of fun just to do a little bit of research and try and figure out what details I can add to bring the spirit of the ships through in the colour schemes and the builds as well as trying to make them look as accurate as possible uh, when you have dystopian war models you're trying to put a historical paint job onto. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it as well because it, it has been a, a real pleasure to sit down and do something a little bit more personal to me, a little bit more grounded in the, the place where I live, and um, just to do something a little different uh, than just big armies or you know bespoke individuals or whatever, or simple paint jobs. Because <laughs> um, as simple as the steps were in these, it did take a fair amount of thinking to try and figure out what I wanted to do and how to get that spirit of the ship across. Um, I think the only thing missing really is a smashed submarine on the front of Olympic. <laughs> Um, because she did ram and sink a U-boat in the First World War, which really does feel kind of like the sister taking vengeance over her two uh, sunken uh, partners. So interesting, interesting. Uh, Olympic had a hell of a time, had a hell of a time, hell of a career. Uh, the other two, they did their parts as well to a degree. Um, but in general, these models were great to work on, great to build, and an absolute pleasure to paint. So I hope it's given you a little bit of inspiration to try something a little different with your dystopian wars if you're doing them, or maybe just inspired you to have a go at something like this yourself, just get into a little bit of a, a historical kick with your dystopian wars and uh, just see what you think, because these schemes really do fit the size of model very well. And uh, in general, it's just been a, a lot of fun to work on. Now, I'm not gonna ramble any further. I think you guys will want to go and see something else now. So if you're interested in the Dystopian Wars, head over to Wayland Games. Uh, they have all the uh, the landing pages stuff there for you to pick your factions and uh, ship identification cards and all that sort of stuff. They have everything there for you if you want to get started in Dystopian Wars. If you're already into it, do drop into the comments as well. And if you see someone that's maybe thinking about it, try and encourage them across as well. Um, but until next time, thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.